Hi everyone, I'm Chris Day here in Kennesaw, Georgia, where later today the 15th MLL champion will be crowned right here at Fifth Third Bank Stadium. I'm joined by Evan Washburn, who will be calling the game later on CBS Sports Network with Dave Ryan. Evan, thanks for joining us. Of course, thanks for having me. So let's break this one down, Evan. Let's start with the two teams that are here, the New York Lizards and the Rochester Rattlers. Now, New York comes in probably as the unquestionable favorite in this game with all the big-name stars and the big acquisitions in the offseason of Paul Rabel. But Rochester comes in as the team with the most championship experience, having been here last year and losing in the championship by just one goal. So what's going to win out? The big name stars, the championship experience. What do you think? Wins? What do you think will be more important? Well, I, I honestly think that the experience is more important for Rochester, and it kind of gets layered into their identity this season. They're unbelievable underdogs. No one really talks about them under the radar, and they enjoy that, and they'll have that moment here tonight. And New York comes in with all the pressure, all the expectations, and I think it's starting to weigh on them. Last week they came out in that slow start against Boston, and because of their talent, were able to come through and get an unbelievably exciting win. So the experience that Rochester have being on this field, in this locker room, and then you think of the guys on the team. Jordan Wolfs won a championship. Uh, Mike Manley's not playing, but he's won a championship. There's guys on that team that have tasted success. In New York, flip side, it, not so much the case. And I just think the pressure is building and building. So a slow start could really be a, be a recipe for disaster for New York. Now, these two teams haven't met since early in the season. It was April. They met, I think, in weeks two and week three with New York sweeping. Both teams are drastically different, but it was in those two weeks that Greg Gurenlian really laid his case for MVP, which he would go on to win uh, in the 2015 season. He was dominant in those two wins. What can Rochester do to maybe negate some of the advantage that he has over really every faceoff guy in this league? Well, I think the magic number is 65. If they can keep him at about 65%, Rochester will have a chance. Now, it's a different faceoff man than the first two meetings. Mike Poppleton came over in a trade, so he'll get his shot at Greg Grinley. But I think the responsibility really lies on Joel White and John LaCascio, the two wings for Rochester. They have to take advantage of any time there's a loose ball. If Greg doesn't win it cleanly, it's got to be Rochester's possession. So that's something to keep an eye on. I really think Joel White's a guy that's got to have arguably the best game of his career for uh, Rochester to have a shot. And, and you mentioned just the roster is so much different, but it really is Rochester that's got a roster, a totally different team. And I think that's a benefit to them as they face a New York team that's pretty much had continuity from week one to now. And on the other end of the field, we have the Offensive Player of the Year, Jordan Wolf of the Rattlers, more than likely matched up against the Defensive Player of the Year, Joe Fletcher of the Lizards. Do you see that being the matchup, first of all? And if so, how do you think that one will play out? Who has the advantage? Two extremely talented second-year players. Oh, they're definitely going to match up, and it'll be unbelievably entertaining to watch. And I think it's going to be difficult for Joe Fletcher. Now, he's capable of guarding a man behind the cage, in front of the cage, off the wing. but. What Jordan Wolf is doing now, because of the additions of Kevin Rice and Randy Stats, is he's able to not play that traditional X position. He's coming out of the box as a midfielder. They're putting him on the wing to match up and create mismatches. So Joe Fletcher's responsibility isn't just, all right, I know where he is, I'll cover him. He's got to find him coming out of the box. There's got to be communication with other guys. Where's 31 in maroon? And, and that becomes taxing as you get to the fourth quarter. So I think the toughest position will be Joe Fletcher having to deal with finding Wolf first and then having to deal with covering him. And then lastly, at the other end of the field, you mentioned before Mike Manley, last year's Defensive Player of the Year, has been out for most of the year after suffering an injury. New York's attack is unbelievable, led by Rob Pinnell, who led the league in scoring and was runner-up to Jordan Wolf for Offensive Player of the Year. How does the Rochester group match up on defense, that is, match up with that high-powered with all those big names of New York Lizards attack. Well, the Rochester Rattlers defense loses their big star in Mike Manley, but they still have continuity. John Lay, John Galloway, Will Kashansky, we mentioned Joe White, and they've all played together for a number of years, Lacascio in year two now, and then Donnie Moss, Jack Near, the rookie, uh, and Michael Lazor, those defensive midfielders. It's a group that almost is like a college defense when you stack up the years that they've played together, and anybody that knows successful defenses, it's all about communication and chemistry. So they lose that big you know, horse, that one you could put on a number one scorer like Rob Pinnell with Mike Manley, but I think they're still capable of holding teams under 10 goals. The fact that they were able to do that to Ohio, who I think was the best offense coming to the playoffs, shows you that this is a defense playing at an unbelievably high clip. It's going to be a tall order, and I think it'll continue to just be six guys, not counting on really one big gun because they don't have one with Mike Manley hurt.
Well, last year's championship game here at Fifth Third Bank Stadium went down to the wire with Denver beating Rochester. We're hoping for another great finish. It's 7 o'clock tonight on CBS Sports Network. Evan will have the call, as I said, along with Dave Ryan. Tune in, and, and thanks for watching.